Hey all you elite freaks, welcome to another Elite Dangerous episode. Elite Dangerous is epic, gigantic, one-to-one -one scale sim game of the whole galaxy where you can do anything you want. In previous vids I was helping in the war against the ongoing Thargoid invasion. Yes, there will be more. <laughs> and most recently, hunting pirates and ridge racing. That's actually a personal favourite of mine lately and I want to do more of that too. I have this idea to replicate that scene from Top Gun 2, you know, where they go up the mountain and then... Uh, <laughs> that would be a spoiler. Anyway, right now, the squadron I'm with encountered either a mentally ill child or a weird and wacky egomaniac who threatened the whole galaxy, but more importantly, he threatened us. That was a mistake. I hope he's not a mentally ill child. Anyway, our leader, one bushrat, decided to take the fight to his system. I don't think he had any idea how many of us there are. A bunch of us warped our carriers over to his system and begun to crush his faction. It didn't take long, and now we're making sure his system stays in anarchy or something like that. Basically helping his enemies so his faction can't progress. Here's me helping the Abe organization versus the Weirdos faction, which are called the Bunny, Dobunny, Dobunny. Enjoy. Uh, just a little background for you guys and a reminder, refresher, or if you're new, completely new. This is how each sortie will start. I've left my carrier and I'm flying towards the conflict zone. I'm in super cruise right now, then I'll drop out of super cruise and enter normal space. If you want to know what's what, I'll just do this section or just jump to three minutes. The little target symbol there in the bottom left, that's where anything I've targeted will show up, just like on the right hand side is my ship so I can see my ship's shields around the actual ship and its hull the actual ship's health which is a hundred percent right now then that disc in the middle that's my scanners like you can consider it like a radar so anything above the panel is something that's above me and anything with a line going down below the disc is objects and ships underneath me that small little little circle just to the left of the big disc that's like a direction indicator it shows whether things are behind me left or right uh, or ahead of me um, the HUD shows on the inner rim it shows the beam lasers and on the outer on the right hand side it shows my rail guns on the left left side it shows extra systems like heat sinks and chaff launchers um, the on the far right those pips we call them shows our capacitor for how much power we, we want to distribute to like engines systems and weapons and I think the rest you'll figure out as we go just sit back turn out your lights and enjoy it you can see by this stage I've already stripped his shields off. That's that's when it says that that means I've deployed my heat sink. That thumping weapon, that one, that's my most powerful weapon, that's the rail guns. Now this steady stream, those are beam lasers. The railguns are much harder to hit with because... <laughs> yeah, the rails are harder big <laughs> I just got hit by an ally. Keep going, Commander. I'm saying the rails are much harder because it's a fixed weapon. You'll see the little reticules on the heads-up display. It's They just sit in the center of the screen. Whereas the lasers... It's on a gimbal and they actually track. You'll see you see the little dots for the lasers tracking the enemy as they get in view. Boom! Apart from how much 
bonus I earn in the top right corner. You can also see how the conflict's going. The obviously the green is is the faction that I'm fighting for, which is called Abe Organization, which is the enemy of the weird dude, which is the Dubani Dubani. If you're not familiar with the game, the Viper is only 50 ton little fighter, whereas my ship's 320 tons, so that's why he's so much more maneuverable. Pretty good at handling the crate, but yeah. And so it's much more agile than mine. And this section's cool, like, watch. The Clipper, the white ship there, is an ally of mine, so I have to be really careful not to run into him. That's this clip. Might be another clip I'm thinking about. But yeah, these conflicts are really hectic. There's so much going on. It's really dense. And here it is. Another battle won. They're retreating. Great work, Commander. You really made a difference. Roger that, Commander. Moving to engage. I'm only chasing down this straggler who's already on just 7% hull because I can and because I took a mission which is separate to this conflict and the mission is, was the to destroy 54 Dubani so that counts towards my mission now I'm going to head back towards my carrier here it is my carrier I've skipped ahead for you. I mean, the Super Cruise is not very interesting. Hello, uh, it's more of a sim than a game. So, yeah, I've got a request clearance to land. Look at this thing. That is my carrier. Look at that. Even, even the name of it written on there. I picked those colors, everything. Uh, I had this game for years before I could afford one of these. They cost this one costs me 13 million every week just to run. Can't remember how many million to buy the thing. So what I do while I'm running uh, missions or in this case the conflicts is pretty much just repair and rearm and off I go again quick turnaround like in war see I'm off I'm gonna skip the journey again because it's pretty boring uh, but I'm just parked right next to the planet and the conflict zone is right next to that so there I selected it from my navigation system got a boost away from the carrier because the carrier has you know just enough gravity it's called mass effect it's to, lo to lock me to it to prevent me from going into super cruise but there it's cleared now I'm entering super cruise it's, it's it's a faster than light speed so that you can travel greater distances it's for it's for travel within a system if you want to go from system to system you go even faster but that's more like um, wormhole technology more like warp uh, warping space uh, I'll come, I might show you that in another video. This video is all for combat. So I'm going to cut this and go straight into the combat. There we go. Who am I picking on now? Yeah, I, when I first jump in, I like to pick off the weakest, weakest ships because um, that way, if I can kill as many as possible in a shorter time as, as possible, it, it's going to help tip the balance of the conflict in the favor of my side. My allies. Affirmative. Maneuvering to attack position. Uh, what's happening now is that his shield's being gone for so long and his hull getting destroyed, he's going to start to run. And so 
I want to kill him as quick as possible, but to prevent him from running, we can actually select subsystems on the ships that we're shooting at. So I select his frame shift drive. So if he can activate his frame shift drive, he can literally jump out of you know, this normal kind of space into super cruise, and then it's just like watching them wink out of existence. You know, like a Star Trek videos where they sort of go pew and see a trace and then they vanish. And I did it. Sometimes they get away, sometimes you can catch them. <laughs> boosted a bit too fast there. You guys, if you haven't played this, you have no idea how much fun this is. Being just a small vulture, which is a small fighter, it's giving me a surprising hard time you watch he keeps oh no that's a must be another ship hitting me but yeah look at my shields down to 35% here you hear me use chef okay hear that sound that's my shields recharging and then immediately after a heat sink because uh, recharging your shields can cause your ship to overheat and I killed him now this fight we don't see the beginning of because I didn't expect it to be worth watching because it's you know, it's just uh, just a python now pythons are tough ships but it's an NPC so I didn't expect to get into any trouble but there goes my fighter and um, it's shooting plasma at me, so I, I gotta be careful if I get hit too many times by plasma. Plasma is one of the toughest, you know, one of the most damaging weapons. It's hard to tell, but I was drifting right, or I should say thrusting to the right, because we got thrust vectors all over, we got thrusters all over our ships. We can thrust in any direction, just like any spaceship. And um, yeah, so I started recording because he's actually a lot tougher than I thought. His ranking is master. Let's see what happens. He's the little red triangle that I've got selected on the radar screen there and when it's flashing that means he's shooting at me and the reason I just rolled, rolled past him a few times is because I'm doing other stuff like uh, recharging my shields and hitting chaff and just sorting my ship out. Now I've, I've got him lined up again. Shooting my beams. Now I have my beams engineered a little bit. Uh, one of them is engineered to cool the ship down when it hits my target. And the other one is engineered for extra strength and long distance shooting. Right now I've got his frame shift drive selected so that... Oh, he rammed me! Did you see that? So the shields that I just recharged, he basically just shredded them all again. So now I'm recharging them once more. Uh, that is me using boost. Got a nice railgun hit on him. So now I'm winning. It's, it's that was just me launching a new fighter. I actually carry... This is the clip I was talking about. See that clipper on the left? That white ship? That's an ally. And he's fighting the same ship. So I've got to be careful. I know he's going to be flying alongside of me. In a second I'll do a head look. Ah, it's the wrong clip. But, woo, I love flying through the explosion. Now I'm scrolling through with the scanners, scrolling through the different ships looking for a viable target. And when I find a target I like, 
first thing I do is send my fight up and then I'll attack that's my fighter there nice hit from over a kilometer away it's always much harder to hit with that rail gun yeah I'm desperate to hit him because uh, I thought he was running away and I, I didn't care about my ship overheating if you don't know what I'm talking about on the left of the scanner display that's the heat of the ship See on the left selecting through different targets. And this one's got no shields and his hull is already down 50%. Perfect target. Ah, this is the clip that I was talking about. That's the clipper, probably. Yep. See how close he is and he's flying parallel to me. Now above me. See that? I head looked. Head looked again just to check because I was about to pull up to chase him and I would have flown straight into my ally it's so hectic in these conflict zones I mean you should see the radar sometimes it's just dense really packed and you don't want to shoot your allies because then they'll turn hostile and then you'll have every ship after you and you don't want to bump into any ship and look at this Viper, it's so maneuverable. Trying to outrun me, trying to turn around. A good a good enemy will just keep flying away and then running at you, flying away and running at you. Luckily my ship is quite fast and it's a little bit engineered. Um, here he comes again for another attack run. Oh no, see, that's his frameshift drive that was just detected. Now he's trying to run. And as you can see in the left hand corner there, I've got his frameshift drive selected. Ah, uh, I killed him. I had already damaged it. And once again, we've won the battle. I've kindly skipped the going back to carrier, rearming, repairing. Actually, I don't think I was damaged from that one. And then flying all the way back here. And I've just dropped into the conflict zone in a second. The comms will come up asking me which faction I want to fight for. That's in the top left. And Oh yeah, you saw that. And now I'm trying to pick the first targets, the weakest targets. There's a likely candidate. Oh, he's elite, but he's got no shields. I'm not scared of that. It's just a Cobra after all. Let's see how maneuverable he is. Wow, I'm damaging with just my lasers. It's weak. Not for long if I catch you. Yeah, <laughs> see, offline already. Nice rail here. He's buggered. He's gone. He's dead. Come bluey. wasting any time here, just immediately select the next one. See this is the early stage of the conflict, I want to kill as many as possible, as quickly as possible, so there's no chance of the other side winning this conflict. What have I got here? Another Python? They can be tough. Python is a ship a lot of people would have picked as their main ship before the crate Mark II came out. I don't like it that much. I tried one out for a while. It's cool, but many little things like not having a fire.
fly today. I prefer the great one. Thank you so much. So much. Oh, someone fired a missile. Look on the radar screen, bottom right, and then across goes that little white thing to the left. Boom. So, uh, so I'm lucky someone else is shooting at him as well. 10% hull is almost done for. Wow, look at that. In this next clip, I've got to explain something. See that little white dot coming from behind me and then hit my ship, touched my ship and then left again. You heard that little sound? That's a drone. It's called a limpet. It's, uh, and this one's a collector limpet. There's many different kinds of limpets we can get. And what it's doing is collecting materials from the space wreckage out there. So I'm being pretty cheeky during an, <laughs> an important conflict. I've actually stopped fighting and just sent out drones to pick up uh, stuff I want. And I'm letting my little fighter do the fighting. I mean, I figured, look at, look at the advantage we've got compared to the enemies and uh, what I'll often do is I'll send my fighter out to aggro one of the enemies and then recall it tell it to come back towards me the enemy will chase it into range of my weapons and then I'll tell my fighter to re-attack it and then we'll both be shooting at it but in this case I'm just reaching out if I can and just waiting for my uh, collect Olympics to finish doing their job which in a second you'll see there you hear that I closed my cargo scoop and I'm back into the fray selected this targets frame shift drive usually in in these clips I've selected the frame shift drive a lot but as you can see now that's what I usually select the power plant there's a good chance that if you destroy their power plant, the ship will blow up regardless of how much hull it's got left. Oh, that was a good, good collision. Recharging my shields while having pumped some chaff. Hey, he's hit the chaff as well. Your shields aren't going to last as long as mine. Already gone. Look at that. I have a... Th yes! I was going to say, I have a feeling I hit him with the rail guns. A lot. There we go. Poof. And he's done for. He doesn't even know he's dead yet. <laughs> Woo! That's an easy, easy kill. Ah, uh, someone's already killed it. Dang. What's this? Oh, another vulture. That's an easy kill. After a while I get sick of her voice. She doesn't have to acknowledge every single order I give her every time. Especially not when it's constantly the same order in conflict zones like this. Boosting my main thrust like that helps with maneuvering. Also in the speed bar to the right of the scanner there, that little blue section to the left of the speed bar, that's the most maneuverable speed zone. Look at those sparks. Beautiful. Quickly select this frame shift drive since he's definitely going to be running. This is an imperial version of the Eagle. 
remember I explained before that those little ships, like this is another ship that only weighs 50 tons, they're very maneuverable, often very fast. And I reckon this guy's gonna rab it. Damaged his frame shift drive, but it's definitely not enough to stop him from actually jumping. Oh, nice hit. So hard to hit these guys that are janking left and right. These maneuverable fighters. Hard to hit with the rails. There's another miss. There's a hit. Oh, look at that. I'm right on your backside now, buddy. <laughs> I've got no more power. Barely got enough power to shoot. I've balanced my power distribution because I, I don't want him to outrun me. But it happens, as you will see, I think, in a second. 11% and he got away with 11% hull. So not to want to waste all this time, I take the opportunity to scan his wake signal. Yes, I've got a wake scanner installed on this ship. Oh, look at that. I just um, finished a mi my mission of killing 54 Dubani. Yeah, so me scanning the wake signal tells me which system he jumped to if I wanted to chase him. But I'm just scanning him because I want... There's a... Radio signals can be useful in crafting stuff. So yeah, but uh, I was saying I finished my mission. That's worth 12 million credits. Taking on an Imperial Clipper here. They like to... They fly weird. Some of them like to ram. They're usually not very maneuverable. They'll often just sit in a straight line or they'll spend some time just rotating. Anyway, I'm sure you guys have seen enough or had enough of this combat. It's probably spazzing your brain out. Um, so I'm going to fly to a planet. Or was it a moon? I can't remember. Um, where there's this penal colony, that's where I actually grabbed the mission to kill 54 Dubani ships. There it is. How freaking cool is this? We can land on the planets. I wish it was one with an atmosphere. You could see the re-entry. It's just oh, so awesome. But this is just a small, probably a moon, but just a small planet. It's not that cool visually. And remember, my computer's crap. It looks a lot better when you've got high graphic settings. See on the HUD, the altitude there, it's 200 something kilometers. You've got coordinates below that. And then the number on the very bottom is the gravity of the planet compared to Earth's. How cool is this? This is my ship, by the way. This is the Crate Mark II. I'm telling you, it's the absolute best all-rounder. Good for combat. All sorts of things. I've got a lot of... I've got like 28 different ships. I just bought another one of these just for fighting Thargoids. But I haven't kitted it out yet. My most kitted out ship for fighting Thargoids is a Crusader. And there we've entered the glide portion, which is my favorite bit. From here on, all the way to the landing is my favorite. <laughs> Look at this. I like treating it like real flight, especially when there's a bit of an atmosphere. So I'm going to request clearance for landing. 
and see from the little direction indicator there it's to the left of center so I know it's over there there it is it's the lit up pad which is number five I think can't see while I'm editing yeah it's pad five so I'm going sort of on a downwind and then I'm gonna turn base there we go Headlock, go on, Paxis, yep, there it is, turning on final. There we are. Flight level three, zero, zero. Beautiful. Look at this colony, isn't it cool looking? So here, I can repair, refuel, grab missions, I could depart the ship if I wanted to and walk around the station. If you guys want to see that. Let me know in the comments and I'll actually get out of my ship and walk around the station. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching. You don't need to see me hand in my missions and get all my bounties and combat bonds. Uh, I think it added up to about 22 million credits. Thanks for all your support, patrons, and uh, please like and subscribe and I look forward to the next video. Peace, love, and mung beans. Practice out.